We've got a lot more coming up on the program, but I hear it. I hear a little cork popping. It's probably my favourite sound. It's a bit of a staple drink, as we know, for any celebration. Take a look. I'd like to stay and taste my first champagne. Yes? No. Can I get a bottle of chilled Bollinger Grandonnet? Blazing around, guzzling Dom Perignon on my expense account. Cheers. Cheers. Anything fast! Ah! Can we get another round of champagne? You are fun in Abu Dhabi. <laughs> Oh, and she's called Champagne Jane. She is a connoisseur. She knows everything that needs to be known about needs to be known about champagne. Good morning. Good morning, How are you, Jane. Lovely I, to be here. Everybody loves champagne, and as we've seen there, it's always been the drink of celebration. Why? Well, the tradition with champagne is it's always been associated with the coronation of kings. Uh -huh. So, are they the only ones who could ever afford it? Uh, certainly in the olden days, yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. Okay, it's got bubbles, but how did somebody figure out wine could produce bubbles? When and who invented it? Well, the story goes that it's actually Dom Perignon that invented the bubbles, and he he called He's, out his he was brothers a the monks. He was the monk that was was down in in Champagne. He was sent to Champagne in 1668, mm -hmm. and the, the story goes that he claimed, "Come, brothers, I'm drinking stars." That's not actually the truth. Um, the truth of the matter is that it was the English that invented champagne. Oh. Now, that'll provoke a lot of comment, I'm sure. <laughs> um, but, in fact, champagne was a still red wine. Mm -hmm. um, and it's produced in the region Champagne, mm -hmm. Campania, the Latin word meaning uh, mm -hmm. low, flat um, farm country. And the wine was first used by the Bishop of Saint-Rémy for the baptism of Clovis, King of the Franks, in 496. So that was when it was first mentioned in the history books. But, of course, in those days, it was a thin, still red wine. Okay. What happened next is over the over the next few centuries, with all the kings that were crowned in Reims, the champagne became well known amongst the monarchy and also amongst obviously the European powers. Mm -hmm. And then the English used to import their wines. All the wines were in barrels in those days. Mm -hmm. They'd import their wine into the UK, and then they'd actually add sugar and molasses in their own cellars Ooh. to make it drink brisk and sparkling. Okay. Why do we have this shaped bottle compared to a wine bottle, and it also underneath? That's the punt. The punt, as they call it. Okay, and what is the purpose of a punt? Well, the punt is actually to make the glass stronger. So the, the shape of that bottle and this shape in here mm. is actually because you've got six atmospheric pressures. All of the carbon dioxide that is dissolved inside that champagne mm -hmm. would otherwise explode. And that's one of the very first um, yes. champagne shapes. Why is that? Sh is that shape better than that shape? Um, no, that's just actually more of an old-fashioned um, shape. Mm -hmm. So it's more of a. Um, and what is the correct way to pour said champagne? So if you, were, I see the waiters come along. They always seem to stick there. Oh, there's no yes. punt in that. Why is there no punt in that one? Ooh. That's interesting. There's actually a Behind stopper my... in there. No, well, there is a punt inside because you can actually oh, see it's it a through stopper, there. Oh, it's a stopper, isn't it? There's, okay. there's one bottle that Well, let's start with this one. You always yes. see the wine waiters come over and they do that and they serve it. Should you, when you're standing at a cocktail party, I was always told... To tip your glass. To tip your glass. Why do yes. I do that? Well, in theory, it's to make the angle a little less strong so that when the bubbles come out, that's all the carbon dioxide bubbling up. Gently, I thought it was gently. so the waiters Good didn't get RSI. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what's the best glass to drink champagne from? We've got this flute, you've got the good old fashioned, I call this the Marie Antoinette. Yes, indeed. Um, and that is just to me looks like a wine glass. Yes. And these are very cool. So, yes. which are the best ones, or it, is there a well, best it, one? It, it depends on the style of the, of the wine. Flutes were the traditional style of. of of champagne glass. We're mm -hmm. these two here. So that's a standard flute. This is a prestige cuvee. It has a slightly wider bulb and that actually this one. yes, that actually concentrates the aromas more. In that um, that it's slightly yes. wider than that one. So yes. that's better. Now and these ones here, these are actually natural wine glasses, but they can they, they're also mm. used to sparkling. Trust me, you can drink champagne out of anything. You can, you right. can. Um, and the and, and the fabulous coupe here, that was supposedly modelled on the bust of Madame de Pompadour. And one of the myths do you get more inebriated by drinking champagne out of a straw? No, no. Oh, um, you but, you get, but you do get drunk more quickly because when you drink champagne, all of the carbon dioxide rushes into your body, convinces your brain that you've been exercising, because that's the other time you'd have lots of carbon dioxide. So your blood circulation increases, you get slightly flushed, oh. and you feel merry without feeling drunk. There you go, exercising. I've now legitimise my new exercise. I appreciate Indeed. that. Champagne, Jane, congratulations. You've written all the myths, the facts and the history of champagne and congratulations. Thank you very much. We've got more coming up. We've got news headlines. Also, two of the funniest guys in the world and certainly uh, in the UK. Hail and Pace. Join me live.